Jesus said, Man cannot live on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You're listening to Daily Truth. For God to pardon sin justly, sin must be ignored, dismissed, no, atoned for. Sin must be atoned for. And this is where we get that New Testament word, propitiation. And I talked about how in even pagan realities, a propitiation was a sacrifice that that a tribe or a people or a nation, think of the, the, the Mayans and the Aztecs, they would put forward a sacrifice in these pagan cultures, usually a, a human sacrifice, and they would put forward this propitiation to satisfy the wrath of the angry gods, right? Perhaps there was a famine in the land or some kind of natural disaster like a flood or a great storm, something that was, was killing them off. It was harming the people. It was threatening their livelihood, and they had no control over these things, but, but they would recognize that there were, there's some God, and usually in most cases with pagan worship and pagan religions, there would be pluralism, a plurality of gods, and in their pantheon of idols, meaning a temple with multiple idols, they would go in and make some kind of, of sacrifice, usually a, a, a a inhumane, barbaric sacrifice of, of their own people in order to satiate the wrath of the gods, to atone for that sin, the sin that, that usually they weren't even necessarily aware that they had committed. They didn't even know what the sin was, but they knew that it had to be paid for so, so that the judgment of the gods would cease. It's very similar to the story that we have of Jonah. Even the sailors, and these are pagan sailors, Jonah is not boarding a ship to Tarshish that that, that is filled with a Christian crew or even a a Jewish crew. These are pagans with, with a plurality of false gods, and even the pagans recognize this is no mere storm. This storm has, if you will, a divine origin. The gods are angry. And they demand sacrifice. Someone has angered the gods. Someone has offended the spirits. And we will all go down in this storm if we do not sacrifice to the gods the blood that they demand. And so too we know as New Testament Christians that Jesus is the better Jonah that Jesus was thrown into the raging sea of God's wrath towards sin, but not just as an abstract entity, but God's just and righteous wrath towards sinners. Jesus was thrown into the sea of God's wrath in order to still the storm, satisfy God's just requirements so that God could be merciful towards you and I, those who have been born again by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, while perfectly upholding the metrics of his justice at the very same time. This is the gospel. And what we see in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1, our text, is that all the blood of the animal sacrifices that were offered and put forward under this Levitical priesthood, the old covenant of Moses with the nation state of Israel, all of it, all of it was insufficient. And it's not as though, brothers and sisters, that they came close, right? We were just a few thousand bulls off and we would have had it. No. Uh, They were infinitely falling short of what only could satisfy God. The blood of a bull cannot ultimately atone for the sin of a man. And this is why Jesus became the God-man. Jesus never became God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is not the first of created beings, which is a heresy. No, Jesus is God. He is the creator. He is the word whom through him and for him all things that have been made were made. And by the word of his power, he upholds the entirety of the universe. Jesus is God. Jesus was always God. But there is a moment in real human history where the son of God 
became the God man, where he took on flesh. John 1, 14, that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory of the only begotten son of the father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. Jesus took on flesh. And one of the chief purposes that he took on flesh, as we saw in our text, for our call to worship, and as we'll, delve, dive, we'll, we'll dive deeper into next week, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5 and 6, sacrifices you have taken no pleasure in, but a body you have prepared for me. Jesus became the God-man, took on flesh, so that he might bleed out and die. So that as man, he might die to atone for the sins of man. A bull cannot atone for the sins of man. A goat cannot atone for the sins of man. A lamb cannot atone for the sins of man unless that lamb is the true lamb of God, the God-man, Christ Jesus. Big news, really big news. Our next Right Response Conference is in the works. We've got a number of things already lined up and organized. This is what we've got so far. The whole conference, three days long, on postmillennialism and theonomy. And the speakers, Dr. James White, Dr. Joseph Boot, Gary DeMar, and of course yours truly, Pastor Joel Webbin. We've got a great lineup. We've got great topics. If you want to find out dates and location and registration and anything else, go and visit our website, rightresponseconference.com, rightresponseconference.com.